Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah! This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform. By all means, don't miss the Good Life Devotion any day. Now, welcome to today's episode with Dr. David Bindon. Wow, wow, praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. I am full of joy once again to welcome you to today's episode of our favorite glad devotion because we are sort of rounding off on this subject today and we shall bring you some uh, repeats for emphasis in our weekend edition of Metro TV tomorrow and on Sunday. And don't forget, we shall have a condensed session on live TV 4 to 6 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, it has been awesome. We deal with the subject of the Christian and business. And we have taken it far. We've looked at various subjects. If this is your first time, you have four episodes that you've missed. Right after this one, make sure you go to our YouTube channel and watch. Like it and share it with others. Leaders of the nation need to hear this message. This is a message needed everywhere. Father, I thank you for this time. Once again, we bring light into the lives of people and the nation and our great lives to the next higher level by the impartation of life and spirit. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, by way of a recap, we began by inspiring you. And I will say it again. My brother, my sister, no matter what it takes, never remain among the masses. You were not born for that place. That kind of societal uh, uh, structuring of hierarchies it came about because of wicked systems and Satan. But with eternal love in you and the Holy Ghost, you can break that system and bring positive influence in your world. Number two, get out of the self-imposed slavery mentality of someone else will employ me. You see, we don't work for work's sake. It, it pains me a lot to realize that many people are just working. They don't even know why they are working. There is this slavery and deceptive programming of life. People just think that life is a cycle of um, like meaningless events. It's like they, they can already calculate how life will go. Okay, now I'm going to school. When I finish, I marry, I get work. Then I build a house, I buy a car, I also take my children to school, then I retire, then I die. It's like a, 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 a kind of cycle. Many don't know the meaning of life. Why do we work? So for the average person, the reason why he or she works is because he wants money. And yet that was not the reason for work. <laughs> And let me tell you, if you, the reason why you are working is because you want money, you are in slavery, and you are most likely missing purpose. The reason why we work is to fulfill our purpose. 
And for that matter, bring out what God has put in us to be a positive addition to our world. That's the reason why we work. So some people, they don't like the work they are doing, but it is just because that work will give them money. You are not working. You are dying. What you call work must be something you are, you are willing to stay awake in the night for. It might be something you are willing to wake up early in the morning for. Something that always excites you because you are about to do it. But if you are doing something and you have to be pulled, you wish the next day will not come. For some people, Sunday evenings are their most terrible nights. It's like Monday is coming again and they have to go to work. If you are like that, you have missed purpose. If you are like that, you are in slavery. Oh boy. Those of us who are working, we can burn the midnight candle and we don't feel tired. We can do what it takes, but that is what we live for. This is work. Something you do that you can exert energy and even in your tiredness you want to do more. That is work. Something you enjoy to do, that is work. Why? That is how you were made. And you will never find work this way if it is not connected to what is in you to give. And that's what I'm saying. No matter what you are doing now, the Spirit is telling you, ensure that what God put in you to bring to the world is not locked up. That's where starting the business comes in. What is a business? It's a setup to supply goods, services that are needed in exchange of others or money. But of course, the money and the are supposed to help you regenerate and give you resources enough to make your impact in this world. Then we said, as a child of God, it's not just anything called business that you can do. There are right and wrong businesses. How do you know something is the right business? Is it pleasing to the Lord? Is it beneficial to society? Is it what God would like you to do? One for to look at doing the business the right way. It must be done God's way according to the scriptures. Then we proceeded to look at the fact that if you are starting anything, you must be ready to face the beginner's challenge. The challenge of low patronage. The challenge of people neglecting you. The challenge of small income, I mean, profit and all that. They are all uh, the beginner's challenge. But stick to it because it is purpose. And not long you have passed that stage. It takes the anchor of faith. Today we're going to look at the interest of love. You know, when you do business, you expect to get some interest, some income. But here we're talking about the interest of love. In other words, love being the pay for the business. Oh, praise God. Father, I bless your people with grace, with life, with spirit for this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Our main scripture, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27. Proverbs 3, 27. It says, withhold not good from them to whom it is due. Oh, shakabaya. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thy hand to do it. Don't withhold good from the people to whom it is due when it is within your means to do that. This is what the whole discussion this week has been. In fact, just before then, let me read this scripture to you. I see a lot of people, especially in what they, they now call the third world countries, looking for what they call greener pastures. Everybody is running away from their country. Yes, some people have to relocate from where they are to another place, but it must be divine. Okay? You can move from your village to another city. You can move from your city to another one, or your nation to another nation, your corner to another. But this must be divine. Not when you are rushing because everybody is else rushing. Look at this. In Acts 17, verse 26, says that, and he's talking about God, and has made of one blood all nations of men to dwell on the face of the earth, and had determined the time before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. So, the nation in which you were born is not by mistake. The continent in which you were born is not by mistake. 
That means that when you were coming into this world, God knew, okay, what is in you and the people who will immediately need what is in you. And that is why he dropped you there. Of course, sometimes God drops you in certain places because he wants you to have some experiences. And that is why he drops you here, but he moves you there to a place where the people primarily need what is in you. But the point here is that wherever the Lord has put you, it means that what is in you is primarily needed by the people in that community, city, or nation, or continent. I get in that. Now, if the people needed something, and the thing was given to you, and you now came, and you are not bringing the thing out, what are you doing? You are withholding from the people good that is due them when it was given to you. Are you following this? So for instance, a lot of people don't understand and they, they criticize, but I don't have issues with them. They wonder why uh, I have to leave the medical practice. I could have been doing well somehow in the medical practice. That's good helping people. But what God put in me is to cleanse the system from the ignorance of God's truth. To bring the, the truth of God's word to men and women so they can rise up to their highest potential in life. Now, imagine I came this way into this world. And because of my education now, I allowed education to lock me up in a consulting room somewhere. The world would have been deprived of these truths that will come to them at this time. Now, if I live that way, I would have done mighty and great things as a doctor, maybe done what I need to do. But when I return, that is when it shall be revealed that I was a woeful failure. Are you following me? This is so serious. What are you withholding from the people of your continent? Or your country? Or wherever you live? Are you sure that you are dispensing to your best ability that ability God has put in you for your world? Or you are withholding from them what is due to them because you've locked yourself up in something else? It's an important question to look at. It says, we told not good from them to whom it is due. Who are those people? Those to whom you were sent. They are due that thing. So a lot of Christians are withholding the gospel from the world around them. Jesus said, go ye and preach. They'll go and shout their mouths, oh, I don't want to be religious in my, at my workplace. And yet somebody came to do business there. God sent the person, you have the gospel to give. You refuse to give that person. You are withholding good from them to whom it is due when it is in your power. Let me just see what we have here. So it is important to understand that we do not work or do business primarily for money. I told you this over and again. Yes, resources will come. Yes, money will come. But these are not the reasons why we do what we do. You are not supposed to start a business mainly for money. The world will do that. But you start a business mainly because there's something in you to bring to the people. People who make money their first reason for work or doing business are never really successful in life, I told you. Because you were not made to find joy in having money. You know, when people are poor, they don't know that money doesn't satisfy. But if you talk to very rich people, they will tell you, money doesn't satisfy. They can make billions of dollars today, that means they don't want to make one more dollar, one more dollar. A rich man was asked, if he's asked for one thing, what would he want? He said, I want one more dollar. With all that he had, he wasn't satisfied. Why? God never made you to be satisfied in money. God made you to be satisfied in fulfilling purpose. God made you to be satisfied in meeting the needs of other people. That is where joy is. Any leader of an organization or a community or a nation who doesn't do that to meet the needs of the people, they are never satisfied in life. They may amass a lot to themselves, but it never satisfies. All right, let's go ahead. We put it that 
We do business because we owe our world the benefit of the divine potential in us. Did you see that? This is why you must study business. There is something in you. You owe me something. And I owe you something. For me, what I owe you is to bring you truth, which I'm giving to you now. Now, you owe me some service. Don't lock it up. You owe the world something. People have some skills in them to invent things, to do things. But sometimes the environment is just not enabling. But I want to tell you, never blame the environment. You have something in you. That thing with God can come out. You can be the first person to create an enabling environment for others. Maybe the reason why the environment is not enabling is because you are the one made to make the environment enabling. Oh, praise God. There's so much to read here, but I'm going to show everyone at the time we'll continue to look at what we have. We're talking about the interest of love. And what the Lord is taking us to is to get a place where we know that the love we owe the people is what is our main joy, what is our main dividend, what's our main profit in business, not the money. I'll be right back after this break. Lord. Great news for all viewers, listeners, and readers of the Good Life Devotion all around the world. The Good Life Devotion Week Celebration 2023 is here. We are celebrating God for the impact of the Good Life Devotion beginning 24th to the 30th of July 2023. This means the Good Life Devotion Partners Conference will be coming off live on the Saturday 29th of July 2023 at 8 30 a.m gmt at the good life center to collegono is going to be a time of impartation and upgrade in our lives as partners and you must not miss it it's the good life devotion partners conference 2023 see you there Praise the Lord. So still talking about the interest of love, we say that we do business because we owe our world the benefit of the divine potential in us. Every one of us needs the other, I told you. We all came into this world with something to contribute to the ecosystem of life. I want you to believe this. It's the truth. When you start a business by looking for a human need, and reaching out to meet that need, you will put the people first. You will put the people first. So for instance, if you start, let's say, a water refining uh, project to supply water, if your target is money, you will not even filter the water. You start packaging water with particles in it and then you can write on it pure water. And you don't care who drinks it. That's wickedness. But if your intention was to supply clean water, you give attention to filtering the water and ensure that you package clean water for the people. So you are putting the people first. See? Someone is selling food by the roadside. And then you are sweating. You are just using the same hand to clean your face, and then the next time you are using the same hand to fetch the food and sell. It's like you have not thought about the consumer. It's all about quick to get the money. No. Whatever you do, let the person at the other end be your focus. Let's go. We put here that success is in putting a smile on someone's face. Success is in putting a smile on someone's face. That is success. Many don't know. And especially in ministry. The success of a minister is not in many of the things people look at. 
It is in when someone can smile. Let's go. We said success is in lessening the burden of someone oppressed. Oh, glory. So if you are doing something that is rather oppressing people and you are making money, you are a failure in life. Success is in putting a smile on people's face. It is in lessening the burden of the oppressed. Success is not in amassing money. When you do business with love for people as the aim, it will pay you the interest of growth, establishment, positive influence, money, and honor. Did you hear that? If you start out and you are consumed with the interest of the consumer, you are consumed with the goodness of the one that will get the service, and that becomes your main target to give the person good service, what will happen? It will generate interest that will bring growth to what you are doing. It will bring establishment, it will bring positive influence, it will even bring you money and honor. What I'm sharing with you, these are big time nuggets. If you take time to listen to them and put them to work in whatever you do, you'll be amazed in a few years' time where you'll be. We said that let love be the arcing principle of your business and the interest will be enormous. If the reason why you are doing what you are doing is because you love people, there's no way that thing will be stagnant. It will grow. And I keep on, because I'm not into business, the only thing I can share with you is the ministry. <laughs> we started mainly to bring truth to people. We've seen people liberated, or we can't count. That what I'm doing now, we pay to get it to media platforms. Of course, you know it is not for name. So that people will hear truth. And when we hear you say, I'm free because I've heard, that is our pay. So because you are our target, and we are interested in you getting the truth, we may not know you, we may never meet you till in eternity. But that love we have for you is what is making us continually expand. It's a principle. Do your work because you love the people. Do your work because there's something in you to bring a positive impact in their lives. And when you do that, establishment, growth, honor, even money and other things will come. The interest of love. Let's pray. Pray for yourself right now. I don't know what you want to pray right now. But I believe you, you need to listen to these things from day one to day five. Combine all and make your own notes and pray fervently until you look around and see what you can do to help your society. Something is in you, that has you unleashed. That's why God came to you this week. Shall we pray? Father, I thank you. The world is changed to another level by the release of these truths in Jesus' name. If you have been watching us, it is time to receive Jesus. Jesus wants to come into your life and make you a son of God. He wants to take out the human life and give you the life of God. You can't miss him today. Believe he came into this world and died and took away the sins of the world and declare him as Lord by saying this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I believe you came to die to take away the sins of the world. I believe you are Lord today. Jesus, I declare you Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Hallelujah. If that is all your heart, truly, you are born again. Please don't forget, Monday is the start of the Gula Devotion Celebration. If you have not sent your name and number yet, please do that right after here. Don't forget, I'm going to come away again. A special weekend edition of Meadow TV. That's tomorrow, 10 p.m. and Sunday, 10 p.m. But on Sunday at 4 to 6 p.m., we'll be streaming on live TV, 4 to 6. Don't forget. Surely, if Jesus starts, I'll return to you next week with another subject within the week of the Gula Devotion Celebration. But till then, life is good. Enjoy. If you just got born again today and would like to fellowship with us, call our numbers displayed and connect with any of our new creatures fellowship branches nearest to you. Dambai Pasa in Kwanta Takrade, Kaswa Lagon. 
Tachiman, Tema New Town, Ashama New Town, Tema Ashaman, Gulf City, Nungwa, Inkonya, Kolegono Tree Speaking, Kolegono Gas Speaking, Kolegono English Speaking, The Multinationals Church or our virtual church online. We will be glad to fellowship with you. Do call us. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bendan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.